Inside each of these four painting kits, there are three large tubes of SAA paints and also a guide sheet of how to paint the pictures. But in addition to that, you'll have access to three YouTube videos where you can paint them along with me. Thank you for joining me on this watercolour demonstration. Uh, this painting's completed using my general painting kit, which just contains three colours specially chosen by myself for creating general paintings. The paper I'm using is just a small piece, about 7 by 5 inches, of Saunders Waterford 300 grams rough paper. It's nice for sliding the brush over and creating uh, a nice texture. The first thing I did was to wet the sky area and then add uh, a shade of the blue, but quite weak. And as you can see then, a very weak mix of yellow in there, but trying hard not to touch too much onto the blue, otherwise it will create green, which will look odd. So there's the sky just about finished. I need to move on quickly now. So with quite a bit of blue and a slight touch of yellow, a weak mix creates this nice blue-green. And while the sky is still wet, I can just dab in these tree shapes. And then with a slightly stronger mix of the same colour, again just dabbing in some small trees, it adds depth and interest to this background rather than it just being a single colour. And then with a wet brush, just a brush with clean water, I'm just rubbing along the base of those trees, just touching, and that allows it to move and grow and create almost a grassy effect. With a rigger brush, which is a long thin brush, I'm just creating some tall trees in the background using the same colour that I used for the trees and then a few branches. This will pale quite a lot but it will give some interest into that distance. Again I've moved fairly quickly so the paint's still damp which means I can add another dark layer in front of those distant trees and then start to work on the foreground. I'm very roughly marking out where the path's going to go just with a wet brush with a slight touch of colour on there. I'm going to add a little bit of red to that now just to create some mauve colour. I will put a bit of blue into that later but it just gives me a rough idea of where the path's going to be. I'm also adding a little bit of yellow but it's quite wet and weak and that just gives it a nice bit of shine and looks like it's reflecting the light that's coming from the background. I've mixed some strong green now using the blue and the yellow. As you can see it's quite strong but it's still damp in areas so it's spreading and moving around which adds interest to the foreground. Mixing all three colours together quite strong gives me a nice dark and I can start adding some darks in there now. The important thing for me is to use quite strong colours to make sure there's a lot of detail there. What I do want to do now is start poking in there just with the yellow and let it spread and move. It brightens up the forest floor and uh, gives us a lot more interest. Within a few minutes the painting's dry and that's what I need before I move on to the foreground because I want some quite strong lines with no softening. So in with the rigger brush to paint some distant trees. This is quite a strong dark colour, a mix of all three really to give me a nice, almost a grey brown colour. These are the trees in the middle distance, I shall start to thicken up and put some chunkier trees in the foreground with an even darker colour which again will be a mix of all three but quite a lot of the red in there to keep it nice and warm.
while the trunks are still wet I start to add these branches just with the tip of the brush they're quite long and thin these branches and it makes it uh, a little bit more realistic Using the same dark paint I like to add grasses around the base of the tree just by flicking and what I'll do later you'll see is just use a very wet brush and just rub it along the base of those trees so they look like they're rooted rather than just standing on thin air. Finally, with the real thick paint, I'm going to add the chunkier trees in the foreground. And again flicking up some quite large grasses on the base of these trees and also using a wet brush again to try and uh, make them look as if they're rooted into the ground rather than just stood on top. leave it like that actually but I think I'll edge the path a little bit with just a tiny touch of dark paint on the rigger brush it just defines the path more finally with a very small brush I've decided to add a couple of people in there I generally paint them quite simply, just a very small head and torso and then legs and a little bit of shadow. So they're just simple shapes, easy to paint. There it is, the final painting revealed. Um, an effective and powerful painting, very strong tones in the trees and some nice pale blues in the background. Well, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration and uh, we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.